when you start a new project, one of the first questions normally is, uh, what kind of CPU do I want to use? Of course, this depends on how many pins do you need, and do I need things like Wi-Fi, for example, or uh, some complicated protocols over there. And the last project I did was Richard from Learn Electronics Repair. It was pretty clear that we wanted to use a tiny CPU, something really small, because we don't need so many pins, we don't need Wi-Fi, we don't need any specialty. So, so you maybe are tempted to use something like the classic, you know, or smaller form of a nano. Maybe you want to use a mega for something like this. In my eyes, a bit of overkill, but you could use an ESP8266, or if you want to real big, want to go real big, use an ESP32. But is this always needed? Or are there downsides? Well, I can think of a downside, especially for the ESP8266 or the ESP32 family. You always compile with a huge amount of code in the background because you're running Wi-Fi. Even if you're switching it off directly, there's still a bunch of code in the background. And this could be a security risk or this could be simply crashing after a long amount of time. So choosing the CPU that fits to the purpose is actually a good idea. For our little project, I had chosen the Tiny 80 Tiny 85. This tiny little thing is an 8-bit microcontroller. That doesn't mean it can't handle any bigger numbers than 255, because it emulates simply bigger numbers. The compiler does this for you, in fact. But it has 8K of ROM, it has 1K of memory, it runs at 220 megahertz. It doesn't need anything external. There's no need for an external oscillator. You just drop in the usual 100 nanofarad cap on the supply voltage and bobs your uncle. For our little project, the specifications were pretty clear. We needed some ADCs, maybe one, maybe two. We needed a pin that can do some bleeping, and that's it. So everything can do this. So the little 80 tiny 85 was our CPU of choice. There's a car available for the Arduino IDE, so you don't have to get out of your comfort zone. You simply program it in C++. You can use Atmel Starter if you want, but if you're used to the Arduino IDE, this is right along the alley. So, thinking about it, how do I get my program into this little thing? Because, yeah, I can use the Arduino IDE, but how do I program this? Well, there's no USB port on this, so uh, there must be a trick with this. Fear not, young Padawan. Coming up. The 80 Tiny 85, well, programmer. This doesn't have any fancy name. The first programmer I got myself, and I can't find for the life of me here, was based on an Arduino Uno. But Arduino Unos are such huge boards, and you don't need much for this. So I thought, okay, I can do this smaller. And here it is. And this is based on, have a look at this, of course, under here it's hiding there. There's a standard Arduino Nano down there. And the top board is, of course, a, a daughter board and a socket to plug in the CPU, some pins out there so you can measure the values on the pins while you are programming here. Well, it works on some pins, not on all. And there you go, this is the whole programmer. Just drop in the little CPU, you can drop it and either way on top or on the bottom part, because it, does, it doesn't matter, because these are in parallel. I had never tried if I can program two CPUs at one time, and I probably won't try this out anyways. But if you're feeling lucky, well, there you go. So, okay, there's not much more to show on the hardware side. Let's get into the schematics. Yeah, and as you can tell by the schematics, there's not much going on. And I draw this about, well, nearly two years ago. This is a long time ago. Well, let's see what I remember yet. So, as mentioned before, everything is done around an Arduino Nano. If you look at the pins over here, you see, oh, MOSI, MISO. Yeah, this is, uh, in fact, an SPI communication. They call it ICSP, I think. This is the insert, blah, 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 programming, I don't know. I never really looked deep into this description. I just uh, went, went with the flow here because... There's one strange thing in the schematics, and this is this cap over here, the, you want the 10 microfarad cap, that is connected to the reset pin of the nano. 
this is a really sneaky trick to keep the nano from resetting. Why do we want to keep the nano from resetting? Because after a programming cycle from the Arduino IDE, it would normally reset the nano and that would be bad. We don't need this over here. So this is the way to keep the nano from resetting here and get a reset done. There's a reset pin for the CPU. I'm not sure where I put this now. So this is the way to do this without resetting the nano while programming. Going up here, uh, some LEDs. This is heartbeat error and programming, I think. Uh, you see, I uh, just dropped on some names over here. And if you remember the PCB, uh, the LEDs itself are three middle through hole components. You could use SMD, be my guest if you like. There's a little cap for the supply voltage over here and a SIF 16. 16 because the AT Tiny 85 is an 8 pin CPU, so I can fit two in there. I can fit them on the lower side and then can fit them on the higher side. As I said before, I am not sure what happens if you try to program two chips at once. Never try this, never go into drive. These little connectors over here are simply pins. So if you program anything in here and you don't have it lying around on any of the already occupied lines, you can test the pins in circuit here. In a way, in circuit. Well, not really in circuit, but it's a space and, uh, well, it's there. So we've seen the whole schematics. This was really fast. Let's see the PCB. Okay, let's start with the 3D view. And uh, before you ask, no, I have no clue why I draw this on top. I have no idea what got into me there. Um, the SMD components, so the uh, three resistors and the 100 nanofarad cap on, on the bottom side somewhere. And... Um, yeah, the all red LEDs over here on the top side. Program error and heartbeat. Heartbeat is a thing that tells you the nano is still alive. I've chosen a frugal component over here for the cap, for the 10, 10 microfarad cap. Yeah, I could have used SMD because there's space over here. And uh, if I would redraw this, I probably would use this. The SIF socket goes over here with a little lever down to the down thing over here. And there you see little flaps over here for the test pins on the CPU. As I said, they are all parallel, so this pin is the same as this pin, this pin is the same as this pin. And um, they are laid out like the CPU is lay laid out. Okay, let's see the PCB. Well, okay, there's nothing much to write home about because, yeah, it's a PCB. And it's not a fancy one, there's nothing complicated on here. The most interesting thing we hear was the routing between this uh, SIF socket so I can connect everything. And I'm always going for, okay, can I do this with the least amount of wires? And I think I don't have any wires over here except for the uh, ground plane over here. So, uh, score. And another disappointment. Well, because we won't write any software today because it's already there. Yeah, I know, 1.8.19. This should be the same in the, uh, what's his face, uh, the two point something IDE. Let me know if not, uh, or simply use the 1.8.19 IDE. So you want to program the programmer first, because, well, the Nano needs to know that it's a programmer, right? Let's do this. Um, check on the files and go for examples. Yeah, examples, of course. And there's one thing you maybe have seen but never used. There's an Arduino ISP thing over here. Select this. And here's your programmer for the Nano. Yeah, and if you are really, really, really bored, you can check through this all. And um, I never did because this simply works out of the box. So how do you do this? Before you build the sandwich of the PCB and the little nano, you m want to program this into the microcontroller because after this, you can't do the reset. Remember the cap over there? So you have to do this first. You need to program the nano first. Don't set anything. Just go for pr write this program to the nano, disconnect it, and solder the whole shebang together. But in a normal Arduino IDE, there is no AT Tiny 85 somewhere. For, uh, there's no call for that. So you download this. So Mr. Spence Conde gave us this brilliant AT Tiny core library. This is another core for your Arduino library. So if you want to add this, 
go to the Spence Conda thing over here, IT Tiny Core, scroll a bit down, and it has to be. And under AT Tiny Core Installation MD, you find Boardman Installation. You simply grab this seal over here, copy, in, go into your Arduino IDE, Preferences, and down there, Additional Board Manager, man Additional Boards Manager, Rules, whatever. Click on this thing over here and simply grab the new thing. You just copy it and simply drop it in here. You see, I have some more in here. So I don't do this right now because I have this already in here. So it doesn't make sense. If you check under Tools, Boards, and over there is Board Manager. Go for this. And simply type ATtiny into the search term. This should be fine. And down here is ATtiny Core in the 1.5.2 version you simply go for install if you haven't installed it and you set now I'll go back to tools select a let's say 80 tiny core 80 tiny 85 and you want a naked one no bootloader we don't need a bootloader for this go for that this is my chip 80 tiny 85 uh, here can set my clock I can set some more settings over here and I need to check, check the port. Of course, this must be my Arduino Nano. Check. So let's write some software, right? Man, I'm so rusty. This took me three approaches to get this running. Don't tell anybody. All right. But we wrote a little program here. So um, this is now compiled for the ATtiny85. And I can flash this now into the CPU. But before I do this, I have to do one thing. Check under Tools and check Burn Bootloader. Well, you should first check the program over here. Go for Arduino as ISP. In Circuit Programmer, in Serial Programmer. I don't know what the S is for. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. So what I do want to do now is I want to burn the bootloader of the chip. This is not burning the bootloader of the Nano the programmer, but it's burning the bootloader into the chip. Bootloader, I selected something, no bootloader over here. Why would I burn a bootloader? There is no bootloader to burn. Yes, there are. Some, there is no bootloader to burn. That's right. But there are some flags like the CPU frequency or something. And this is done by setting fuses. That's what's called in these chips. And um, by burning the bootloader, I set the fuses right. So. This gets me the right timing for the millis and sets everything okay in here. You need to do this for a fresh chip. If you get this, well, unexpected things could happen. So let's go for burn bootloader. Done burning bootloader. That's it. This is so fast, yeah. Let me get the little programmer here in shot. So there's our little programmer. And let's program the chip, right? What you don't want to do, you won't, don't want to press upload over here because you're using a programmer to program a microchip. So this way you go over here and you upload using a programmer. And this uses a nano as a programmer and programs the little ATtiny85. Done uploading. That's it. So now our pin PB1 should be Pulling some lights out there. Should we check this? We do. So here's a little logic analyzer, this thing over here. Uh, by the way, this is another project I did long ago. If you're interested in, in this, building this, uh, let me know in the comments. This could be a nice one for you because this has no CPU. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I can do things without CPU. Uh, yeah, okay, back to the current project. Um, what do you say? PB1 was the uh, one there was a wrinkle blinking on there. Let's see. And yeah, look at this. It's happily blinking away. Isn't this beautiful? Let's give it a minute. <laughs> Success. Well, okay. Now you know how to program an 80 tiny 85. Well, let me tell you this. There are better ways to use this. Uh, we use this 80 tiny 85 because I have about half a kilo of them lying around. For a newer project, I probably would use one of the 
AVR one or two series. So uh, this has a totally different way to program them in because you don't need a programmer for this. Yeah, you heard right. You don't need a programmer. They have a thing that is called UPDI, Universal Programming Debugging Interface. Yeah, I think that is right. This is only one line. They do it everything over one pin. So really, really sexy. And again, if you want to see something about UPDI, let me know in the comments because um, I probably will build other stuff in you if you guys don't tell me what you want to do. Um, and Halloween's coming up, so we need something scary for Halloween. I have an idea for that. That's it from me for today. I hope you learned something and let me know if you're going to build this little thing. Of course, the Gerbers are in the description, the video description as usual. Since the software is already included in the Arduino IDE, I didn't do a big mashup of everything. So if you ever use an 80 tiny 85 let me know in the comments what, what was your project that you built with this, with this little thing. There are fascinating projects out there. Indeed, they are. So, okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, keep hacking, guys.